Good morning. Uh, thank you for attending uh, our session. Uh, we'd like to uh, introduce uh, some uh, long-term maintenance approaches uh, for the embedded products uh, based on Debian and the uh, Yocto project. Uh, I'm Kazuhiro Hayashi, working in uh, Toshiba uh, Corporation in Japan. Uh, and uh, usually uh, developing uh, our uh, embedded Linux uh, products in our company. Uh, and also I'm a member of the CLP project, uh, which, is, uh, which will be uh, described in this uh, session. And uh, could you explain yourself? Yeah, my name is Jan Kisker. I'm basically doing the same what Kazo is doing, but for Siemens Corp Technology. Um, I'm also involved in the CIP project, looking after the, the ESA pass of CIP, where we look into later on, um, and also maintaining and, and contributing to a number of other open source projects. Thank you. And here's uh, today's agenda. Uh, uh, first, uh, I'd like to uh, explain uh, some background uh, in our product development and uh, uh, explain what is the CAP and the CAP core, uh, and explain uh, some concrete example of the implementation of the CAP core uh, and how uh, we are thinking about uh, building pro uh, products on the top of the CAP. Uh, here is a basic uh, steps uh, in the industrial product development uh, in the left side uh, and in the right side uh, there are um, several requirements uh, in each uh, required in the each step uh, for example uh, in the development state uh, we uh, need to select a uh, uh, base system uh, which supports um, multiple architectures and uh, embedded bows. Uh, also, uh, the high customizability and the scalability is required to uh, cover uh, the many kind of uh, product developments. And uh, usually uh, our uh, product developers uh, require the ready-to-use images uh, um, to uh, install uh, the systems into the target very uh, easily and uh, quickly, uh, as well as a uh, uh, standard long SDK, uh, which is required to develop the application uh, by themselves. And after the uh, release uh, product, uh, uh, through a uh, product uh, certification, uh, the products uh, will be in the maintenance phase. Uh, in this phase, uh, uh, important things is that uh, we need to provide uh, many kind of bug fix and uh, security fix if needed um, uh, without uh, changing, uh, um, uh, without adding uh, many uh, significant updates uh, to the each uh, software uh, installed in the targets. And, and we need to support such kind of uh, things uh, for a uh, long term uh, with the verified uh, automated update. And we also need to uh, uh, do such kind of things uh, very quickly uh, and also need to share the, uh, common uh, resources, uh, elements uh, required uh, in the multiple products. So uh, things uh, what we need to do first is to select appropriate uh, base system. Uh, we usually select uh, the one uh, Linux distribution for that. And also need to provide uh, some tools uh, uh, that uh, can integrate the, that base system uh, into our product requirements. Our civil infrastructure platform project uh, was uh, launched uh, to uh, cover such kind of uh, requirement in our product development. Uh, it provides uh, first uh, industrial grade software, uh, which is required to uh, achieve the features, required features uh, like reliability uh, or high real-time performance and so on. And second, uh, 
it also needs to uh, provide the sustainability so that uh, the systems uh, of the products uh, uh, need to be uh, maintained a very long term, uh, more than 10 years, uh, be being based on the standards. Also security. Um, yeah, there we uh, need to apply the many uh, security fixes uh, for a long term uh, by the very secure ways uh, without the regulations. So uh, basically, uh, the software stacks uh, of the product uh, consists of the Linux kernel and core packages, uh, sorry, um, uh, the 100 uh, packages uh, that is provided in um, an open source uh, distribution and uh, the product specific software. And CAP uh, is focusing on uh, to establish uh, an open source base layer, uh, which consists of a super long term uh, supported kernel uh, plus CIP core packages. Uh, most uh, famous distribution focusing on uh, provide uh, various um, 100 uh, packages to cover the various requirement uh, in general, uh, but uh, the target of the CIP is the uh, bottom two things. And several, uh, there are several uh, work groups uh, in the CIP project, and CIP core is one of them, and it focuses on uh, user land software and the tools. Uh, the one of the goals uh, of the CAP core uh, is to provide a defi uh, to define a list of uh, CAP core packages uh, that uh, should be maintained uh, for a very long time uh, by the CAP. And uh, also to provide uh, the reference implementation, uh, including uh, that uh, CAP, uh, core packages. Also, uh, to test uh, the implementation on the CIP reference hardware, uh, which is de decided by uh, the CIP project members. Uh, currently, uh, around, uh, currently, the six uh, boards, uh, reference hardware, uh, defined in the CIP project. This is uh, the position uh, of the CIP core uh, work group in the CIP project. Uh, first, uh, we uh, clearly uh, decide, uh, define uh, the process to decide uh, uh, core packages uh, we need to support and uh, discuss with the CAP, other CAP members, uh, then uh, update uh, the core package list. And other work groups, uh, like a security and uh, software update, uh, request uh, some packages or additional configuration in the system uh, to support their uh, uh, support the features uh, they are requiring. Uh, in that case, uh, each work group uh, requests uh, some uh, specific pa specific packages uh, to the CIP core. Uh, then the CIP core uh, provides the reference implementation, uh, in, uh, including the super long term supported kernel and the CIP core packages. Then uh, test uh, the implementation on the CP reference hardware uh, based uh, using uh, the CI environment uh, provided by the testing uh, work groups. So what is the CP core implementation? Uh, currently, it's uh, based on Debian, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, major and high quality distribution uh, in the world and. Uh, from long time ago, uh, there, uh, it supports uh, many new and old archi CPU architectures and uh, uh, suitable for the uh, various system from small one uh, to the big one uh, where there are many package, various packages need to be installed. And also, uh, it provides a lot of uh, security updates uh, frequently uh, by uh, Debian security uh, team. Uh, and also Debian LTS and Debian uh, e extended LTS project. So uh, CFP Core uh, provides uh, two profiles uh, based on Debian. 
Uh, one of them is a generic profile, and another thing is a tiny profile. Uh, in generic profile, uh, it, uh, uplo uh, its approach is, is uh, the binary based, uh, and uh, using the tool uh, either uh, to generate the final image. And uh, in the tiny profile, uh, we uh, this it depends on the source packages of the Debian and using the Debian as the build tools. And uh, I, we would like to explain uh, some features uh, of each uh, upstream project. Uh, first one is Debian. It's a repository name is Meta Debian. Uh, which is uh, pro one of the Yocto project extensions uh, for using the Debian source packages. So uh, the build system is completely the same as the Yocto project. And uh, its goal is to achieve the uh, stability and long-term support uh, with uh, uh, keeping the Yocto advantages. Uh, yeah, uh, Yocto is uh, very f uh, flexible and extendable oh, by uh, adding uh, our own uh, recipes. And uh, the interesting, one of the interesting things is we can provide uh, some uh, very small footprint uh, system uh, using the Debian sources uh, around, it's, uh, the root file system size is around two megabytes. And uh, it can also provide uh, uh, various target massing configuration for the various CPU architectures and tuning, and also as well as the BSP layers are provided by the board vendors. Uh, you can check uh, this upstream repository, and CAP Core Tiny Profile is provided as the bottom uh, URL. Uh, this uh, described how the DB works uh, very simply. Um, in the bottom, uh, there is a Pocky. Uh, that is provided in the Yoke project. And uh, on top of this, uh, the Meta Debian working, uh, it, it uh, contains uh, some recipes uh, to cross build the Debian sources. And also, it uh, provides some common functions to effectively uh, fetch or unpack or patch uh, the, the Debian sources. And uh, finally, the big bake automatically generates the required uh, images like a kernel and the root file system with loader uh, and a standalone SDK for each uh, hardware. Then uh, from this slide, I'd like to change the speaker to, yeah? Yeah, thank you, Kazu. So I would like to give you a brief introduction about the, the build tool we are using for the uh, binary-based approach in uh, CIP. That's the ESA build system. Um, it's not part of the CIP project, but it's an external project we support um, that has the goal to, to, to generate you basically a Debian-compliant, Debian-compatible uh, image um, out of normal Debian, or in a normal Debian way, um, out of binary packages, mostly. Um, it's a developer-centric workflow, so you have one uh, command building, basically. Um, you have uh, still the need in embedded world uh, to do customizations and extensions to some packages, but not to all. That's the philosophy behind it, and this is supported by this. And yeah, as we are primarily binary-based, it's efficient building. So the idea behind it is basically combine the best of both worlds, have the binary distribution as a major source, but have uh, a build system similar to, uh, to Yocto, which actually we are using Bitbake internally um, in order to have the customization and have also a similar structure um, like Hazo described for um, the Meta Debian approach. And that of course also implies reusing knowledge of developers who used to work with Yocto before. Just to give you a brief idea how the workflow looks like inside uh, ESA, so we start with a, with a debootstrap um, of the required environments we need for the target as well as for the build environment. Uh, so we create a build change route out of this um, to have yeah, a build environment for custom packages for those few we may have, like for example the kernel, um, or some customizations on other packages or not yet Debian package, uh, uh, packages or components. 
So you can either uh, come with a, with a source package which uh, contains all Debianization, or we have some uh, internal recipes which are generated ad hoc. Well, of course, not a Debian standards, but technically working. And then you generate uh, packages out of these normal binary packages and add them to the pool of the pre-existing uh, Debian packages to finally sample the root file system um, for your target, uh, install all the needed components. So it's all package-centric. And last but not least, generate an image out of this, the image you want to boot on your system um, from the flash, from the SD card, or whatever you have. Um, for that, we are using VIC um, from the Yocto project uh, in most cases. Some uh, are done with uh, custom classes, but uh, that is uh, yeah, the approach behind it for, for customizing the image, generating the image, doing the partitioning, uh, bootloader installation, all the needed stuff, and then you have your bootable image in the end. Um, these are the two systems. On top, we have um, our, our layers uh, for CIP. Um, so for the, the ESA variant, there is the ESA CIP core layer, and this is just to give you an idea how quick you can generate an image um, for a concrete board, in this case, the BeagleBone board. Um, we're using configuration management tool for that, which is also usable for, for Yocto and for the tiny profile path. Um, and you well, just select basically what you want to build, which board, which configuration, and in the end you have this directly bootable images. So to compare the two approaches, um, the, the, the ESA path is you get the compatibility to Debian, so you get an image in the end where you can just, if you like, to install further packages on the target when you're developing still, um, or you can pull from all the compatible sources of Debian packages onto your target. Um, while with a tiny profile, you have a system which is confined, first of all, to a subset of Debian packages which have been put into recipes. Uh, but in addition, you can pull from the Yocto world additional components you want to have there. Clearly, the goal for the generic profile is, uh, well, a bigger size system, or well, bigger these days is also relative, so anything starting from 100 megabytes plus plus minus um, is the normal goal for these systems, while, as Caso said, for Debian you can go uh, much smaller. Um, Compatibility I already mentioned. On the ESA side, the binary packages. On the Debian side, the Yocto recipes. Um, the skill set is, is kind of similar. Uh, Bitbake, Yocto is uh, the common sense, but in addition, on the ESA side, you should have a little bit of knowledge of Debian packaging. Uh, to do things properly, um, for the non-trivial things at least. For the simple things, as I said, there are automation for that available. <laughs> Major difference is, of course, the build time, as we are generating not too many packages with the ESA pass. You're usually up to a few 10 minutes for an image build, while if you have to build everything from sources, you can do the mass that can easily uh, go into our dimension. Um, regarding the customization, uh, yeah, needs for these two paths. Clearly, if you go the, uh, the generic profile, the ESA path, that is only needed, or that is the goal should only be to have a few packages customized and the rest just taken as they are. Uh, while with the Devi profile, you can, the tiny profile, you can go much more into customizations with all the pros and cons you have of this. So, yeah, typical systems um, for the generic profile, IoT gateways, edge devices, industrial controllers, everything of a certain size, uh, while with a tiny profile you can go down to small IoT devices, everything which still runs something like Linux. So, of course, these paths also need to be tested. Um, so we have uh, set up, well, not too surprisingly uh, complex test infrastructure where we push uh, the builds um, on both sides into um, GitLab, so CIP project is hosted on gitlab.com, um, and trigger the uh, necessary builds on them. We have a, a AWS-based uh, build farm behind it, um, which is a project of its own, by the way, so you can also use it if you like to, um, where these images are being produced and the artifacts later on being pushed. Uh, to S3, um, and from there on, um, in parallel, the build also triggers uh, a lava test. So uh, a lava master is running in our lab, and we have a couple of uh, yeah, member labs uh, hosting a few boards, 
um, that they will then take these jobs and execute, pulling the artifacts and executes the test run directly on the targets. So how do you apply this now into a product development? Um, so normally if you build a product, you are not happy with just taking what we distribute in form of a layer or in form of package list. You want to customize, you need to customize. That means you need to put at least one layer on top which describes your product. Um, to, well, install your custom application, to do further adjustments to your target, to, to, to add some BSP which is not in scope or not supported here as is. Um, for that, both approaches, uh, as I said, are based on the Bitbake uh, layering concept, so you can put these layers on top and manage chain, uh, the, the, the customizations in this way. Um, you can also manage, of course, more commodalization, so if you have a product line, um, define common product layers, or um, even go into, into your mapping your corporate uh, structure on this if you have a for your division a commodity, you can also put it this way. Um, and as I said, these passes are supported in both profiles, even if the technology underneath are in details different. And actually, this is currently also the approach that CIP members are applying. So we have internally in our companies um, this kind of structure. We have some business domain-specific uh, commodity layers often, which add further um, internal or open source components specific to the domain, um, and then further on have the, on top um, the, the product layer describing the individual product or product line. Um, and that happens in, in, uh, with both systems. However, there is now the desire to make this uh, easier integratable with CIP. So currently, the, our internal, or our CIP layers are primarily targeting the testability of our infrastructure. So they are in an early stage. Um, so what you see on the right in the structure is uh, basically just using the build system directly underneath and not yet the CIP layer. This is what we want to change. Um, so we are heading for making the, the CIP layers uh, relevant and interesting for direct product use. Um, means uh, providing relay releases um, with the tested dependencies, also including the build tools behind it uh, and the, the board supports and the things like this and also providing repositories for mirroring our dependencies, so making them long-term available. I mean, by now, many of them are identical to the upstream components, but if you think five years ahead, that situation will eventually change. Not all of these will be supported by upstream communities anymore, and CIB will have to become the, the source and then be provided in one place. Um, so, Furthermore, um, as Carlo mentioned, we are working on these uh, package set, the package list, and that of course should also be encoded as a reference image in these layers. Once it has been concluded, the list, we will add this to it. It's uh, going to be soon. Um, and last but not least, um, as multiple work groups are working on components which should come into test as well, which should be part of this one-stop solution, so to say, uh, we want to integrate them, pre-integrate them. Um, that is uh, specifically relevant for the, the software update mechanism, um, which, of course, is a, is a mechanism which will require some product-specific customization, but the existing patterns could be demonstrated this way, and the existing components we integrate could be tested this way. Furthermore, we are working on uh, making the CIP core also certifiable according to IC standards for security, and further mechanisms and further configurations and tools will be, have to be integrated, and those should also be integrated, pre-integrated via these uh, CIP core layers. So to summarize, um, so CIP provides a, a long-term maintained open source uh, base layer consisting of kernel and essential packages right now, adding further features in the future, providing or aiming for a support time of 10 years plus. Um, we, uh, the CIP core project, or well, CIP work group, the core work group within this project uh, defines this package set based on the input of our members and of the work groups, and ensures the integration of these elements in, in a central layer. We have two flavors for these layers. Debbie approach for smaller um, Dr. OA compatible um, projects, while the ESA CIP core is targeting at larger um, and uh, Debian binary compatible projects. 
Um, both are still early in their stages, but more features are to come around software updates and security hardening, as I mentioned. With that, um, just one note, we have a booth up there in the showcase room. Um, come and visit us, uh, look for the nice Lego figures. Um, there's also a CIP mini summit on Thursday. Unfortunately, we already sold out, um, but you can always approach us on question at the booth and when we are around here. With that, thank you and take any questions. So you're using Yocto to build the Debian sources. Uh, Yocto also comes with it o its own upstream provided sources. Why did you choose the Debian sources over the Yocto sources? What are the pros and cons of each like source distributor? Yeah, uh, basically in the uh, Yocto project uh, sources, uh, upstream sources uh, used in the Yocto project is uh, uh, Hmm. The newer, uh, that is uh, pros uh, to use the original uh, the Yocto project metadata. Uh, but at the same time, um, uh, the Yocto project metadata is not uh, responsible for providing the long term support. Uh, so that is why uh, the most uh, biggest reason uh, we are just to choose uh, the Debian sources uh, or, or as our target. Uh, in the uh, meta Debian and the DB. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, could you back to the slide number uh, four? Thank you. This one. Uh, thank you. Uh, are there anything to solve license querying phase? Are there any tools? Do you think, or do you? How do you think? Um, and it is uh, currently in the C. Uh, um, th th there is no uh, activity as a CIP. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, in each uh, company. Uh, uh, we are doing uh, some uh, clearance uh, phase. Uh, for example, uh, we, uh, we mean the Toshiba uh, Corporation using the phosology uh, to clarify uh, the included licensing target. And yeah, same situation at the Siemens. So we, we are currently not yet in the f more achievable or more or yeah uh, better situation to, to share things between the companies but inside our companies we are trying to make this single stop for the license clearing because currently the lawyers normally trust themselves and not the others uh, to the clearing results are kind of confined at least for the binding results uh, to the companies but inside the companies of course there is significant sharing possible this way and this is also one of the motivations to consolidate inside the companies on, on, a, on a base layers, on, on base components, on a base package set and providing the clearing results internally at least in a shareable, reusable way. There's a question over there. Too few mics here. <laughs> Sorry, Jan. <laughs> Hi, uh, a question from my side. So, uh, how do you handle the Yocto branch compatibility? Because uh, Yocto moves fast, and uh, which issues do you have? Yeah. And, uh, uh, regarding uh, DP approach uh, in the uh, tiny profile, uh, currently is uh, the warrior uh, two, two point seven maybe. Uh, is uh, the target of the target version of the Yocto project and. The, um, it basically uh, depends on this version. So uh, we are yeah, currently not responsible for supporting the other versions uh, uh, in the DB repositories. Uh, so that means uh, if 
uh, yeah, we provide one branch name uh, Warrior, uh, also in the MetaDebian repositories, and we need to use uh, the Warrior branch of the MetaDebian with the Pokey Warrior branch. It is enough Un answered uh, for your question. The second part was, uh, which issues do you have? Because uh, at some point you will have to upgrade and uh, there might be uh, like a bit, uh, I mean, bit big compatibility and others, other things that, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what do you mean? So uh, at least uh, bit big compatible. Uh, the, there's, uh, it is not compatible uh, between the uh, recipes in the uh, open embedded core and the recipes in the MetaDebian. Uh, because uh, some of them uh, depend on the implementation of the uh, Pokey recipes. So in that case, uh, at uh, the worst case, uh, we cannot, uh, we, we get the errors in uh, a bit big passing phase. <laughs> yep. Any other question? Otherwise, thank you again.